As a kid growing up on the west coast of Africa, I learned from my dad that God loved us, that he had a plan for our lives, and that we would understand that through a knowledge of the scriptures and personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We had a lot of Christianity growing up. We were memorizing scripture. Dad would bribe us with, with chocolate and ice cream to, to memorize scriptures from very young. So stuff that even sticks today, like Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not in your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. And we believed this. We, we memorized it. We were imbued with it. But by the time I went to college, I'd had it up to here with religion, and I thought I had plenty to last me more than one lifetime. And so I just stopped attending church, stopped attending, really, I believed in God that he existed, but it didn't really have any practical influence on my life. Well, I got a phone call from dad, and he, uh, he basically said, you and uh, he, he, he said, me and your mom are entering the Catholic Church, and, and it was like getting run over by a bulldozer. There was no preparation, no, no sirens or blinking lights. It was just kind of blew us away that now they were making this extraordinary step. One of it was that we had always been taught that, uh, that the Catholic Church was a hierarchy made by uh, men that went astray somewhere, somehow, someone in the Middle Ages. We were never told who or when or why, but uh, we were just told they were wrong and we were right and, and, and it was very dangerous to uh, get anywhere near Catholicism. So when Dad joined the Catholic Church, uh, a lot of his friends said he was crazy or that he was possessed or, or, uh, you know, or that he was just, the more optimistic ones would say, he's becoming Catholic to evangelize the Catholics. And uh, basically, by the end of it, he would have lost all his friends, all of their financial support. And so this was an ulterior proof to us kids that they were serious about what they were doing. And when they became Catholic, it was, for me, it was just kind of, I was living in California, working in Hollywood, and, and there was not a lot of, not a lot of imposition of dogmas or anything in that atmosphere. So I was just kind of curious, like, okay, well, what does this mean? How does that change your relationship with Jesus? And once I found out, okay, this, this is just not a change of direction, it's a deepening, it's a fuller expression of their commitment and connection to the fathers of the church, the original church. So when my parents came into the Catholic church, it was, an extraordinary discovery of the historical church. Of course, that would take time, right? So I started attending Mass just trying to understand a little better what they were uh, getting into. And uh, I was shocked by the reverence of the people attending Mass. There were very few, but that, uh, that there were moments that you knelt. I didn't really understand what was happening on the altar. But again, little by little, I'd understand that what was in the scriptures, which I trusted, was, uh, was being lived out on the altar. And I never went to communion, but I kept going back to Mass because I always came, came away from Mass with a profound sense of joy and peace. So I started going every day. And for two years, not being Catholic, I went, went to Mass every morning. And I never went to communion because Paul, I knew the scriptures well enough, who writes that some people are sick, some have actually died because they've communed unworthily. Now, I thought I was worthy, but I didn't want to risk it, so I just thought there was something also which is kind of elusive, but as evangelical Protestants, we were always kind of the end of the, uh, the, the, the last word kind of thing. We needed to interpret Scripture and live it out but I knew that I was not qualified to interpret Scripture, and I needed to be under some kind of authority which came, which was instituted by Christ and protected throughout the centuries so that I could have the proper interpretation. So that when I read John 6 and realized that multiple times Jesus is very insistent on the fact that the Eucharist is his true body and blood, soul, and divinity, this, I, I need help with this because I can't go back and read the original Aramaic. I can't go back and read, you know, the con with, within the context of Jewish life back then, what that meant to eat 
flesh and drink blood, which is prohibited by the Jewish law. And so to understand what Christ means by that, what it means philo- philosophically, and, uh, and then what it means existentially for us to live out with the understanding that we are communing in our souls. Like we eat food every day for our bodies. We can go maybe seven, nine days without food, but that our souls are starving too and need that food for the road, fruit, food for the journey, and which is where really in the Mass we begin eternity right here. Eternity starts not at my death, but now communing with Christ in perfect union with God. It was about two years after my parents came into the church. So I went to RCIA. I, I was made myself very obnoxious, asking a lot of questions, and uh, learned a lot of a lot of uh, extraordinary things that uh, uh, brought me little by little. It was a, it was it was a journey for me. It was not not definitely not a a cut and dry case. Right, uh, right after my parents, but that significantly helped me, and uh, I was confirmed after about two years of studying and and talking to priests and and uh, Catholics, and just reading the saints. It was the saints really that brought me into the church. You know, Teresa of Avila and and converts like Chesterton, and being able to lead me on this journey into the fullness of the faith. And then I was confirmed two years. Uh, after my parents' conversion. So I received the Eucharist for the first time after going to Mass every single day. So hungry for the Eucharist that I bit the bishop's fingers when he gave me the Eucharist. He still laughs about that today. But uh, then he confirmed me, into, confirmed me, gave me First Communion, and, uh, and that was uh, in the south of France.